Welcome to the Choose to Lead podcast with your host, Sari Arbel. In every episode, Sari and her guests discuss elements of leadership that affect the business owner's potential to achieve wealth and promote social responsibility. A win-win organization starts with good leadership. And now, your host, entrepreneur Sari Arbel. Hello. Uh, today we are having Megan Johnson with us. Megan, uh, she is a coach and a leader and a woman that I personally adore. And I know that uh, everybody who gets to know her um, feel the same. So Megan, thank you very much for making the time to be with us today. Oh, thanks, Sari. That makes my day. <laughs> thank you. Well, you deserve it. So uh, tell us a little bit about what it is that you're doing and... Um, we will just go from there. Yeah, sure. So as Sarit mentioned, I'm a life and leadership coach. I help people who are feeling stuck, who are feeling um, overwhelmed, who are maybe starting over and they need some support with that, especially the way this past year has been for us in, in pandemic life. Um, and I, I become the person in their corner who's not a friend, not a family member, who can be an unbiased third party and a sounding board for them. Um, I'm also the person that reminds them of the thing they said they wanted when their fears come in. So <laughs> I, I tell uh, people to be careful what you tell me because I won't let you off the hook. And, I, and that's totally from a place of love. Um, but really what I, my favorite thing about what I do is I ask my clients questions that help them answer the questions they're, they're seeking or the questions they're asking of the world they're able to find that the next step in their journey, they actually know it, it's just in here and it's clouded by shoulds and society and what will people think? And, you know, from there it's, it's really powerful and it seems a lot lighter and freeing for them when they realize they know what to do all along, just choosing to step into that. So it's, it's um, I don't drink a lot of coffee anymore and I don't need to because my clients give me all the energy just hearing what they are doing in their lives. It's so much fun. This is very exciting. It sounds like you're definitely doing something that you're very passionate about and really enjoy doing. Totally, totally. I came to coaching having been a teacher. Um, I taught for five years, went into administration for another three. And when I got out of the classroom and stepped into something new, I realized this is actually a mirror of what I was, of the conversations I was having with my students rather than telling them what to do, asking them the questions to get them to realize what their next step is and in the, the long game of what they want versus the short game of what they want at that moment. So it's, um, yeah, I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. So how do you know what to ask? Oh, great question. Um, a lot of it is intuition. A lot of it is um, in just being with people, picking up on cues and, you know, people say things and a lot of times they, there's a lot more they aren't saying based on their tone of voice or just their, their facial expressions or whatnot. So I really go with my gut. And sometimes I ask questions that, uh, well, most of the time I ask questions I don't know the answer to. It's really just to unlock, help my clients unlock something and see where, where we go. But it's a lot of, I have a hunch and I'm paying attention to more so the energy they're bringing into what they're saying than the thing they're saying itself. And um, it, man, it's been uh, a really fun skill to develop, not just with my clients, but in any conversation with my family, <laughs> with, um, you know, in leadership roles, being able to be with a group. And if there's, you know, tension or something, being able to say the thing that really speaks to the root of it or brings everybody back together and makes us realize we're actually on the same team here, even though it doesn't feel like it, um, can be really powerful. Wow. So how, how do you know what to say to the group? I mean, it's really, um, you, are, you are a leader and you are a leader of your BNI chapter. And I must say that um, you are a very successful leader in terms of uh, people are, are speaking very highly of your leadership. So um, when, when did you learn that you're a leader and what do you think a leader, a leader is? 
Oh, gosh. Um, there are only five questions in this one question, yeah. so you can start with any of them. Oh, man, I feel like I learned that I was a leader from working a bunch of waitressing jobs where management just, like, made my head spin. Um, I, I think, like, a number of jobs were, where I have realized I actually need to be the one in charge, so to speak. I need to be the one leading. Um, I think that's just over time growing up, there was always one instance after another where, you know, I was, I was put in charge of something. Either I took charge from a place of, um, <laughs> like, come on, I know, I know how this needs to go. I know I can do this. I have a vision for it. Um, sometimes it was less stressful for me to be in charge than to be the one in the backseat. I'm sure people can identify with that. Sometimes holding back takes less energy or more energy. Um, but yeah, I just think over time, it became something that was just very natural for me to say, hey, I can do this. Hey, I see something here. Um, as, far as, as far as figuring out, you know, how do I know what the right thing is to say was one of those five questions you asked me. I never know what the right thing is to say. Um, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of going with my gut and trusting, not that what I'm saying is right, but trusting if it isn't, I can clean it up. Trusting that the people I'm, I'm talking to, the, the space that we're in, the container that we're in, that I can actually model being a human is the same as being a leader. It doesn't have to look a certain way. It's just who we are in conversations. And it doesn't have to be, making a little mess doesn't have to be the end of the world. We can actually model cleaning that up. Um, so yeah, I never know what to say. And I think in terms of how do I define leadership, that's a big, that's a big part of it. Um, when I talk to my clients or when I talk to anyone, I'm, I'm on this, little bit of a mission to have leadership not be something that we put on like okay I'm a leader now it's actually just who we are and how we handle conversation situations I mean um and that includes sometimes being with your emotions and and being okay with letting them out sometimes and showing that you can be that you can be with that too and still have an impact because we all have them. We're just not all reliable to letting them out. And we're all, you know, most of us operate under this rule that we have to shut them down and show up a certain way. So, you know, what you're saying is uh, very, very um, interesting because what basically what you're telling me is that you trust your guts a lot. And it's, it's, not, it's not something that comes from the head. It comes from your stomach or from your heart. And you just yeah. like, okay, I can do it. You know, just, just the knowledge that you kind of have. However, I believe that most people who are, you know, maybe less, um, less aware or less congruent than you are, they would have a hard time knowing that. And, or trusting this voice, or they had enough people in their lives that told them that they're incapable of doing something and they just learn to believe it. I'm sure you've seen it a lot. Oh, when yeah. You're working with kids, how early it starts, and then, you know, and then it just gets stuck. So the, the big question is if somebody's listening to us right now and, you know, they, they have this contradicting voice because they may not trust themselves to be able to clean the mess if they made one. And uh, if they said the wrong thing and they heard somebody, they're not sure that they will be capable of cleaning up and, and, and making it okay afterwards, like yourself. Or if uh, you know they don't even believe or they don't even trust that they have this ability to, to, to know what to say in the right moment, what what can you tell them? Because I, I believe, I believe, uh, I. I mean, the whole goal of me making this podcast is because I believe that every person is a, is a leader. And my goal is that they will be able to reveal it. But I know that the majority of the people out there, they don't trust themselves enough to, to lead. So yeah. how do you help them? Totally. Yeah. So the thing that I, that I want to distinguish here is, and I had to learn this myself, is that there's a difference between trusting myself and being confident. Um, and a lot of times in my life before I would take any action, and I'm sure others, anybody watching this would, would nod their heads, we want to we wanna feel confident before we take the action because we want to know how it's going to turn out, which is more so we want to be certain. 
which is not the same as confidence, but I think we, we uh, confuse that at times. And what I've learned over time is that actually taking the action is what makes me confident. So now to get to the point where, where I'm taking action, for me personally, um, I'm thinking about my time as a teacher. I got to a point where I was so fed up, burnt out, over it. Like I just hit, I had hit in a way a, a, a rock bottom or just a point where I, it could not keep going the way it was going that I had to take action. I remember days feeling like, I felt like I was in a straight jacket about to burst at the seams. Like I felt really confined and that this cannot be life. Like this cannot be the next 40, 50 years of my life. So in terms of actually getting to the point where taking that action, it might first initially be less about what you're moving towards and more about knowing it's not this and just taking that next right step or the next step that might lead to discovering what it is. And it might be a wavy roundabout <laughs> journey, which I'm finding that's what life is. Um, rarely do things go according to plan. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really just almost like what you said about the head and the heart and sometimes the gut too. Our minds will want, want, want logic and reasoning and, you know, all in an effort for us to stay safe, which great. Yeah, we need that in life. And that's probably why most of us are still alive today. It's, it's kept us here. And when it comes to, I find this especially in leadership, is, you know, the leaders in the world in history didn't do, you know, didn't become leaders by just logic and reasoning alone. They had to take a risk. And that's more of a heart-based decision. You can have all the evidence as to why option one is the way to go. But if in your heart it's stirring and you just know that if you don't take option two, that you'll have that what if feeling forever, option two all the way. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I, I also believe that, I mean, one of my goals is that uh, people will not reach rock button in order for them to, to move forward and take action because, uh, uh, because I think that the, we are missing out when, when we don't have more people uh, taking leadership and moving forward. I mean, uh, that's, that's at least my, my feeling. And uh, my goal is that they will be to, to give people tools to really uh, be able to um, uh, to to choose in and and I think that what you were saying about taking action is the most important thing because uh, yeah just just uh, you know just one one step ahead before I mean and and just just move forward and even if you have no idea what it's going to look like yeah. and also and also to me I mean at least my belief is that. Uh, we have a fantasy of uh, of uh, safety or fantasy of uh, uh, log logical situation. However, if we are miserable in and unhappy, and it seems safe, it's it's a fantasy because nothing is safe in uh, in miser in misery. I think. Yeah, totally. I I hear it. I hear it all the time where people want to be comfortable, so they'll stay in what feels safe, but really. It's, it's not comfortable. It's a discomfort, but they're familiar with it. And that's what, that's what makes it comfortable. So yeah, it might be uncomfortable to get outside of your comfort zone and, and take a leap for sure. It's just choosing which one you're more willing to be with and what's actually going to propel you forward. So it's always a conversation of looking at the long game versus the short game. You know, what's predictable if we stay here in, in this place. And, and it's a willingness to look and have those conversations. Some aren't, you know, some would rather not because even just thinking about it's uncomfortable. So let's just go on with day in, day out and how it goes. Um, one of the things I thought of, Sarita, as you were talking, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my, my story to really get into big action in life was I hit a little bit of a, of a rock bottom that f propelled me out of it. Um, and when I'm working with my clients, you know, I talk to them about like, what's 10% more? What's, how can you exercise in this area 10%? And sometimes it's actually being the one to say, what's for dinner tonight? Like as just the smallest example of where you can exercise, just saying something you want. Um, 
and seeing how it lands. And that might be a more low stakes place where you can clean up that conversation if someone doesn't want to have a healthy salad, you know, and they want steak and potatoes where, you know, less of less key things in your life are on the line, so to speak. I agree. You know, sometimes people uh, think about leadership as, uh, you know, like the president of the United States, but um, truthfully, leadership is everything that we're doing. And uh, I mean, even just taking leadership of your own life and uh, doing what you're committed to may be your, uh, your nutrition, just like you were talking about, or your uh, exercising or something that you want to learn or study or move towards and you haven't, you know, you have committed to completing this one exam that uh, is, you know, um, is holding you back from uh, getting the job that you want or whatever it is. But being a self leader is really committing to something and making it, making it happen. And, and I, you know, or being a better mom of your kids or whatever, being a better parent or, a better neighbor or whatever it is. Leadership, I mean, sometimes people think of leadership as such a big thing, but the truth of the matter is that everything we do is leadership. And that's why I believe that people are leaders. Yeah, absolutely. And even everything we don't do <laughs> is leadership because it's modeling something. And whether, whether we like it or not, someone's looking up to us and learning from us. So yeah, it's the the opportunity to be intentional and actually be responsible for that impact, if anything, just on ourselves, is, is an invitation for sure. But yeah, the, the impact is happening either way. Yeah, I, I, I agree. What you have just said is, it reminded me of the proverb, which I'll probably go, go to mess up, uh, but it says uh, um, that the action that we take and the action that we don't take, both are actually... Uh, you know, a, a kind of a kind of an um, action or an opinion. You know, sometimes people say, "Oh, I'm not going to to tell you what I think," but uh, you know, not saying it is also um, a, a way of showing what you think, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, Megan, uh, just before we finish, if you have one tip to give to our listeners right now about leadership or about, you know, uh, if somebody is listening and they want to do you know, like take one thing with them, what, what would it be? Oh man, I, I heard this quote just this week and I'm going to mess it up, but it's something about <laughs> like, you know, the space between like any hard conversation that you're avoiding having, and it might be hard conversation, like we think it's going to be dramatic and heavy, that really it's, it's just a 10, you know, likely 10 minutes and some sweating, <laughs> like just, just getting, getting it out. Um, I have a mentor in my life who, who likes to say that the trash doesn't smell any better the next day. So, so take care of it. <laughs> do, do what you need to do. Um, I've, I've learned time and time again that if I, the longer I avoid something, the bigger it becomes. And, you know, we're all, we'd all love more energy and more time in our day. And so going about our day-to-day -day lives just as we are versus going through them and having something lingering in the background, that takes up more energy. So, and impacts everything that you're up to. So I say, you know, hit things straight on as soon as you can before it becomes into a bigger issue. Um, yeah, and, and look at everything as nothing, it doesn't mean anything's wrong. It's just an opportunity to reconnect, to engage, and to create something, um, to call people forth rather than calling them out. I think, uh, I think it's a great tip. And the truth of the matter is that usually all these tough conversations are, are much tougher in our head than they actually yeah. are at the end of the day. Megan Johnson, thank you so much for taking the time to be sure. with us today. I appreciate everything that you're doing and it's always a pleasure listening to your advice and your story. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sarit. Glad to be here.